Kate Haskins and Romeo Myrtle are like most students at Dartmouth. Every day is work and school, school and work. Except the work they do doesn't come with a paycheck. Why? Because they're on the men's basketball team. We don't get a stipend or any type of benefit for being athletes, even though we are, you know, working like full-time jobs basically by being on the team. The only way college athletes can get money for playing is through what's called name, image, and likeness. Basically, it lets players earn money for things like autographs, appearances, coaching, merch, video games, or endorsements, just not directly for what they do on the field. Some, like Southern California's Bronny James or LSU's Libby Dunn, can rack up big bucks. But those opportunities don't exist for every athlete. That's why Haskins and Myrtle decided to form a union to get compensated like other student employees with hourly wages wages similar to other student wages on campus or scholarships. Both players have had to take on what are essentially third jobs. Haskins has experience with unions, though, helping start one at the dining hall on campus. And we just saw the impacts and how influential their voices became um, once they actually became a union. There's a lot more power. Athletes have tried this before. The here was seeking to form a labor union. Back in 2015, the National Labor Relations Board rejected Northwestern football's bid to form a union. But a decade later, a shift. Now, the NLRB is backing their bid, ruling the men's basketball team performs work in exchange for compensation in the form of gear, food, lodging, and tickets, since Ivy League athletes don't get scholarships. Dartmouth is appealing the ruling, telling NBC News unionization is not appropriate in this instance. The costs of Dartmouth's athletic program far exceed any revenue for the program. But Haskins and Myrtle already have their sights set on something bigger, overturning the whole system. At the core of all of this, it challenges the the term that we see so often in the conference of you guys being student athletes. What do you make of that term? Do you agree with it? I mean, no, it's a it's an old term and it was used to kind of keep the the athletes as students first and kind of de-emphasize the athlete part of it and the fact that they actually do work for the college. Sports law expert Michael McCann says these rulings could put the entire NCAA on notice. But it's a game changer for college sports. So there would be a fundamental shift in the NCAA's model from a model where by rule the schools cannot pay the athletes and that makes them amateurs. College players are, have a big role in terms of generating revenue, uh, generating fundraising, generating admissions. So schools might rethink some of their numbers. The NCAA has not responded to our request for comment, but it has a key factor working in its favor. Public schools like Alabama, Ohio State, and Michigan aren't covered by the NLRB, so there's no sign athletes at those schools could form unions yet. But more than a third of the D1 schools are private, leaving them wide open to take that step. For Haskins and Myrtle, they're now focusing on bringing together the whole Ivy League under one roof. We're not the only ones frustrated with the Ivy League and uh, with our own school. It, it's everybody. You know, everyone feels like we're being used in the Ivy League, and, and we want to make, we want to change that. Maura is joining us now. You saw her there, obviously, in those interviews. Maura, super interesting. There's also a bit of a political tie-in here, too. Explain that. There's always a political tie-in, right, yeah. Hallie? If you didn't know, the president of the NCAA now is Charlie Baker, the same Charlie Baker who was the Republican governor of Massachusetts. He's a political player that's used to navigating big change in an institution, the NCAA, that's resistant to that kind of change. He was the Republican governor in a very liberal Massachusetts, so he's working on threading that needle to balance both sides. Now, what's more is that the president of the United States actually chooses the general counsel of the NLRB, and so we know that President Joe Biden is very uh, favorable to unions, but this could drag on until well past November, well past election season. Former President Trump hasn't taken a stance on this particular issue, but that could make a difference in this ultimate de decision, depending on what we see in November, Holly. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.